Hey, it's Dave. Welcome back to my channel. Um, back by popular demand, I wanted to talk about another year in music. With all these discussions with Guitar Talk with John and I, we, we talk about music through history. and Basically, I like to talk about the years that really influenced me, but also just it's almost like just a way to show you like how great music was at one point and what's going on today. I mean, if you were to try to think of 10 great rock songs, like iconic rock songs that came out in the last 10 years, you'd be scratching your head. I'm going to name some albums today, and there's probably about 30 that all happened within a one-year time span. Um, and of course, the year is 1981. So 1981 was a great year um, for me. It was uh, my the year I was finished seventh grade and started eighth grade. Um, I was 13 years old. I started playing guitar that year. 81 to me is an important year because I feel like maybe it's overlooked in time. When you ask people what their favorite years are, I always hear 78, 74, 86. I think 81 is right up there. To me, it's 70, 78 through like 82. It was five years. It's going to be hard-pressed to find stuff better. Um, so let's take a look what was going on this year. And I'm going to list a bunch of albums that were important to me um, and give you a little sense of what was going on. And then later, I'll even I'll just at the end put up a list of albums that were released that year more and and it's still not listing every album that was ever released that year but i'm merely just wanting to show you the gravity of of how much material is here um so on one of my videos i did a song by red rider i was showing off my lap steel and i showed the song lunatic fringe lunatic fringe was on the album as far as i am by red rider released in 1981 Van Halen, arguably, and I, when I say arguably, a lot of my friends will argue with me. I happen to think it's women and children first, but they come at me with Fear Warning. Fear Warning was released in 1981. Mean Streets. So this is love. Unchained. Push Comes to Shove. Hear About It Later. Dirty Movies. Sinner's Swing. Rick, it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's great. Um... What an awesome album. Um, the Cars released Shake It Up, and I believe that that is probably the last Cars album that matters. Um, and it's probably the worst of the four, of the first four. Uh, well, no, it is the worst of the first four, but there are some really great songs on there. Um, I'm Not the One, Shake It Up, and Cruiser. Those three alone. Are worth the price of admission. Those three alone on a re on an album today would be one of the biggest albums of the year. And for the Cars, it sucks. It's the worst of their first four. Well, that goes to show you like where people's um, expectations in music have changed. You know, back in the day when you go to an album like uh, the first album, "You're All I've Got Tonight." Um, just what I needed. Good times roll. Best friends girl. Um, bye bye love. Moving in stereo. What else is on that album? Don't just stop. Is that that same album? I mean, just a great, great record. That's what was going on back then like that was the 78 album so for three really good songs and there might be another i just can't think of it off the top of the head and i'm not trying to make a video where i'm not doing things by my memory and looking stuff up it's not really what i wanted to do so though for those three um it's a good album again today's standard it would be fantastic because there's three songs that that are good on an album Judas Priest came out with Point of Entry. Love that album. Heading out to the highway. Hot Rockin'. Don't Go. Um, Desert Plains. 
Um, Turning Circles was one of my favorites. A great, great record. I loved it. In fact, that was right around the time when that album came out. I was also into an album by Crocus that had just come out called Hardware. Hardware, um, and off the top of my head, all I can remember off that record was Winning Man. And I loved the song Winning Man. I can't remember the rest of the record, but I remember as a kid loving it. And I'm going to have to listen to it. Because now I just thought of it. <laughs> It's great. I mean, I remember it being great, and I remember the, the what was the record that came out after that was like um, Eat the Headhunter album with Eat the Rich and the um, Bachman Turner Overdrive cover, Stayed Awake All Night, and uh, Screaming in the Night. That was a great record. I, I really liked the band. I actually think the song Our Love off of the album with Ballroom Blitz, which I can't think of the name of that album either. I could see the cover. Um, but... Winning Man came out in 1981. I remember it because I used to listen to that with the Judas Priest album a lot. Diary of a Madman by Ozzy. That alone is effing phenomenal. Over the Mountain. Um, Flying High Again. The song Diary of a Madman. S-A-T-O, which is what, Sail Across the Ocean? Or is it Sharon Arden? And whatever his wife's name was before that. So that's what they say those initials stand for. I have no idea. No care. Um, Believer, Little Dolls. Uh, what else was on that record? I think I might have named almost all of them there. It's, it's phenomenal. That album to me, I like that album better than Blizzard of Oz. And to me, I thought his guitar tone was much better. And I thought the songs were better. And I love that album. Um. At that same time, that same year, Black Sabbath Mob Rules, Falling Off the Edge of the World, um, Southern Cross, uh, what was the name of that tune? Um, Voodoo, Country Girl, The Mob Rules, Turn Up the Night, effing great stuff. I mean, heavy music then was awesome. And um, that was right when I started playing guitar and... Um, Somebody, uh, a good friend of mine's older brother, his friend came over who played guitar and he was like, oh, you've got to check out Michael Schenker group. So I went out and got MSG, which also came out in 1981. Attack of the Mad Axemen, Are You Ready to Rock, on and on. Um, but I want more. I love that album. And it's my favorite Michael Schenker group album to this day. Um, and I think the first one is really good too. Um, the one with uh, Armed and Ready. The Police, Ghost in the Machine, my favorite Police album, um, is just great. Secret Journey, Darkness, um, Invisible Sun. Every little thing she does is magic. Um, Hungry For You. Uh, I just think it's an awesome, awesome album. Omega Man. Awesome record. One of my all-time favorites from that time. Billy Squire, Don't Say No. Are you kidding me? I mean, here's an album where um, one of my buddies and I, we always talk about this because he loves the song uh I'm not that. nobody knows and i hate it and i thought it was the worst song of the album he thinks it's one of the best but the album had um in the dark the stroke my kind of lover two days gone what do you want from me uh lonely is the night i mean the record was unbelievable produced by reinhold mack who's awesome who produced um Queen's The Game album, and he also was the engineer on almost all the Electric Light Orchestra stuff. It's just a great recorded record. I love that album. Another huge iconic record from that time, Rush Moving Pictures. I mean, Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, YYZ, um, Limelight. Vital Signs. And I can't believe I'm blanking on, oh, Witch Hunt and Camera Eye. I mean, 
the record is unbelievable. Now, there's an album. What is that? Seven songs. Every song on the album's fantastic. And um, what album came out this year that's good? No idea. Also, there's some new bands coming on the scene this year in 1981. We had Men at Work with Business as Usual. Um, again, I don't have to say this is not a one-song album. This is um, Who Can It Be Now? This is Be Good Johnny. This is uh, Underground, Down by the Sea. This record also had Down Under. Um, just an awesome record. At this time also newcomers Duran Duran, Girls on Film, um, um, Planet Earth. There's just too many albums to name here. Um, so I will show you a list of the ones that I feel were super important to me. But also, there was some great R&B stuff that came out this year. Earth, Wind & Fire's Ray's album with Let's Groove Tonight. Um, Rick James' album, Street Songs with uh, Give It To Me Baby and Super Freak. Iconic, fantastic record. Love Rick James. Ray Parker Jr. and his band Radio had the album A Woman Needs Love. Just like you do, do boom. And uh, Smokey Robinson came out with Being With You. I mean, just it's all just rushing in. We've got Devo, New Traditionalist, with Love Without Anger, Through Being Cool. And um, oh, I mean, just such a great record. Um, Frank Zappa's You Are What You Is came out in 1981. Prince Controversy. I mean, it's just insane. Again, uh, I'm not going to go into it much more than that. But basically, 1981 was a smoking year. And it's um, just amazing to me where we are musically, where we are happy when, like, Joe Bonamassa comes out and he's putting out um, a record that I couldn't even listen to one song. And he's the big artist of the year. And... Oh, John Mayer. John Mayer's selling a million guitars. What, uh, what songs does he have? You you couldn't take his greatest hits and make it as good as maybe one of these albums from 1981, in my opinion. I just think that we need to uh, take music back, and um, hopefully it'll happen soon, because it's just, it, it gets depressing. The only good thing is that we have all that good music from that era. And, uh, you know, things have, uh, well, it will not, you know, we can never have that taken away. But that's uh, how I feel about it. Just uh, a lot of great music over the years. I'll go over different years and talk about different stuff. But, you know, this is why when I sit there and I talk about like the influences of the blues guys, it's like, you know, it's such a posturing thing for me. Like I, I feel like everybody postures. It's like they sit there and say, oh, you got to listen to T-Bone Walker. Well, I listen to it. It's, I don't like it. it. It sounds terrible. There's no melodies and I just don't like it. You don't respect the blues. No, I don't. I don't like it. I think it sucks. You know what I mean? And um, and not only do I think it sucks, go look at how much it sold compared to how much Zeppelin IV sold. They wouldn't have Zeppelin IV without it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I always hate that notion that you can't have this without that. He took everything from that. Well, let's say, let's say you say Jimmy Page took everything from, and let's just say, Willie Dixon. Or some other blues guitar. Let's just say, because I think Willie Dixon played bass. I know he played bass for Ch Chuck Berry. But let's say Jimmy Page took everything from John Lee Hooker. What's to say if John Lee Hooker didn't exist, somebody else would have been discovered that may have been better. And Jimmy's influence may have done more for Jimmy to make the Zeppelin stuff better. You have no idea. You don't know, so you can't sit there and say, you wouldn't have had him without that. Well, he, he could have been better. You know, it's like, 
You don't know. It is what it is. If, you know, when I listen to stuff, if someone says to me, if somebody, if, if I were to say when I teach, and let's say I'm influencing young 12-year-old boys who are starting to play guitar, and I'm influencing them because I'm teaching them and I'm telling them what to listen to, and uh, you can't, you got to go back. I'm not into the whole, you got to go back and keep, if you want to, because you're a historian and because you like it, that's fine. But um, Chuck Berry and the 50s artists like Buddy Holly influenced the Beatles when they first started. And, and you can hear it in the songs. When you get to... Uh, a day in the life, that stuff's gone. Like that is somebody becoming an artist and somebody who's developing a style. And you can sit there and say, well, you need to go back. And I disagree with that. I think if you start looking for what influenced that or whatnot, you're missing the music that's here. And, and that's what's important. Because um, in fact... I think a lot of people who skip these early 80s and late 70s songs and say you have to go further don't get to pick up on bands that had melodies. See, these guys who were making music in the late 70s, and let's say you want to, we'll talk Steely Dan for a second. You could listen to Steely Dan and say, well, these guys took from blues and early jazz and even stole it. I mean, you could take the introduction to Song for My Father by Horace Silver and completely see they just stole it for Ricky Don't Lose That Number. But that doesn't give Horace Silver the credit for the brilliant melody of that song. And those songs carry a melody and also carry complex harmonies in the chorus. Well, you can go look back at the early Horace Silver stuff to see what was influencing them, but that's not going to give you the melodic content and the melodic rich stuff. Music is dying because of it, because people have foregone the, uh, now it's like we're gonna, you know, you get the Ed Sheerans of today and they're writing three chords, uh, four chords, and um, whatever that song is, uh, thinking out loud. You listen to that and then go listen to the melody of Let's Get It On. It's the same chord progression, but I prefer Let's Get It On. I think there's some more there's more soulful stuff going on there. And it's and um That's just my two cents for the day. Anyways, this was 1981. And uh very good. See?